Hello, it's Laura from Blossom with Laura here. This is video four of how to make a table centre using chicken wire. In my last video, we put a selection of lovely foliages into the container. And remember, we're taking the shape from nature itself. So we're going from the inside out, everything in towards the middle. When I chose this container, I chose it because it is wider at the top than it is at the bottom. And if, it's, if this is your first time of trying to make a display with chicken wire, this will help because it naturally helps you when you put the foliage in and the flowers in, it naturally helps you uh, get that lovely shape because it is wider at the top. You can move on to straight next time. So this time we're going to put the flowers in. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm a florist, floral decorator. I've been all over the world creating fantastic floral arrangements for various people. And I love flowers. I could put an abundance of flowers in here and it would just look beautiful anyway. But we're going to use some flowers that I've picked while walking the dog uh, out of my garden and also shop-bought flowers from a local supermarket. I appreciate that not everybody's got a garden because I grew up in an apartment in the centre of London and we only had a window box. So I do know that sometimes we have to go to uh, the florist or the local supermarket to buy flowers. So that's why I bought some. The flowers that I've used here are scabious, marjoram, beautiful earthy smell, some achillea, some grasses, a bit of cow parsley and my shop bought flowers. We're going to follow the same shape as we did with our foliage now. Remember we didn't cram the foliage in we want to leave some space so that we appreciate everything. This display is now three days old and it looks as fresh as when I first made it because I've just been topping it up with fresh water, that's all. When you use Oasis, you can top it up with water, but it does start to dry out quite quickly. And uh, once you've used Oasis once, you can't use it again. Don't think that you can use it again afterwards because you can't. So with this, you just keep topping up with fresh water. You can put your finger in the side here and feel how high the water is. But remember, don't overfill because as you start adding, the water will rise and the water will come out all over your table. So here we go. I'm going to start with the scabious. Now to make this, right, okay, I'm gonna show you. So again, we cut on an angle, more surface so that they can take up water. So I've got one stem here. Yes, it has got three little buds on it. And I'm just going to put it in there. Beautiful, yes, beautiful. But see how easy that is to take it out? If I get a couple of stems, maybe three, and I cut them and I hold them together and put them into the oasis. More impact. Again, if I take a couple of stems, put the flowers, not exactly the same, but near enough. And remember, the flow, the flow, we're going with the flow. Cut. Get hold of the few stems. And because we haven't used that small chicken wire, it's not all knotted in there and we're going to try and stab this in here. It should just go in. So we're going to make, have a little look. And put that in. And there we go. Again, I'm going to do the same with 
the margarine. Oops, sorry. There we go. So I've got three pieces of margarine here. I'm just going to take off those bottom leaves so it doesn't make the flowers too smelly. The, the water too smelly, not the flowers. The flowers are smelly. They're lovely. And I'm just going to cut them on an angle and push them in, in towards the middle. One more. Don't get too hung up on, you must use odd numbers. Odd numbers, odd numbers of flower stems I'm talking about. Odd numbers are good um, because we don't want everything too even. But don't get too hung up about it. Usually use it in threes, stems of threes, five, seven, and so on. But um, if you haven't got three, you haven't got five, then use two and four. Don't worry about it. In it goes. Make sure that they go right into the water. Remember, you can cut them longer because you can always cut short, but don't cut too short because we don't want to just take it out and think that looks pretty, but it's not drinking. One more margarine, I think. Take off the leaves and cut. Do you see, just slightly bending over this one. So I'm going to put that in there. Beautiful. Remember the shape that we're trying to create here is this imaginary line that comes down softly onto the table. And remember, always turn your arrangements around and stand back and softly. I will take photos of this afterwards so that you can see it without all this going on <laughs> because it's a little bit crowded here. So now I'm going to use the Achillea. You see the Achillea on this particular one has got a group of its own growing on one stem so I don't need to put a few together. So I'm just going to cut that and again that's going over to that side, or I can turn it around and put it over to that side. But I'm going to face it towards you. And into the middle. Not all the same height. Now this is a little Achillea, and this is a little Achillea. So I'm going to put them together. One may be slightly higher than the other, a bit more interesting, I think. Cut and in we go. Got some grasses. As I say, this has all just been picked on dog walks and uh, various places. I'll be driving along, not very good, been in a car with me. Got my eyes mainly on the side verge rather than the road because I'm always looking out for lovely things to pick and all of a sudden we come to a halt. So uh, seat belts all round when you're in a car with me. So with those, I've just bunched them together, a little bunch together, cut them, and I'm going to choose a nice place to put those in, all together. In they go. a little bit high. Take that out. Okay. You see more impact if you do what we call groups of flowers, groups of colour. And look at this little star. It's a seed head. It's so beautiful. It was a car screech moment. <laughs> so I just got to cut that and where's he gonna go? We've got a place here for him. Oh, cool. 
gorgeous. Gorgeous. And then I've got some cow parsley. And I'm going to do the same. Just maybe get it. Three together. Three together. Put grass in there. And cut. And in they go. Absolutely gorgeous. Okay. Oh, it's another seed head. Cut that. Put that in this side. All going gently into the middle. So now we have shop flowers. Put those out of the way. I did want to show you that I did actually go to the local supermarket and uh, buy them. So in here we have, well we have a nice elastic band strangling them. We have um, one, two, three, four, five roses. And we've got a bit of dianthus and a couple of stems or maybe one, oh, two stems of Alstroemeria. When you're using woody stems like roses, cut them on the angle, but also give them a treat and cut them upways as well, because that way uh, they take in even more water. When you receive flowers or buy flowers, cut them first as soon as you get back. Even if you've just taken them out of water 10 minutes ago, cut them as soon as you get back home and put them in a bucket of water. Once flowers are out of water, they start to seal. So it's not very good taking them out of water, just putting them on the side and then putting them straight in a vase or if you've received flowers and you just put them straight in a vase because they've now sealed and they're not going to take up any water. One of the biggest pains ever was the day after Valentine's Day when I was working in Harrods. And we had people on the phone saying, my roses have wilted. Did you cut them? Did you read the instructions? No. Mm. Okay. So that's my top tip. Always cut before, immediately before they go into water. So roses. I've got these roses. I've cut it on a slant and I've also cut it up. Now I'm going to put that in there. Now with roses, carnations, Gladioli, they're pretty straight, so there's not much bending unless you've got the roses from the garden. So I've put that one in there, as you can see. And I could put the other one. God, these poor things have gone through a stripping machine and they're they mullered. I could put the other one over here. Over here. Now that doesn't make any impact whatsoever. If I put that one next to that one, we've now got a little group of roses coming. So this comes the third one. Cut and snip. Take off those bottom poor torn up leaves. They put them through these machines you see when they're in Holland and uh, it takes off the leaves which is great because it saves us taking off all those leaves standing hours and hours taking off thorns and leaves but it does shred them so and then I'm just going to put that one in there so you see we've got a little group going on here we've got a little group going on here group going on there so pretty even the apples even the apples
What was it we put in the other day? Only a little green. So that's how to use your shop-bought flowers. Use them in little groups. So we've got some dianthus that came in and they're going to go in there. They're in a little group themselves, but I am going to group group them. <laughs> Sure it's in the water, that's it. And another. If you haven't got enough roses to make three groups of three, don't worry about it. Just have roses on that side, dianthus on this side. Makes it more interesting anyway. Everybody gets to see a different side of the arrangement. Uh, my other two roses I'm just going to put into a bud vase. And then we've got some. Astromeria, which already, I think there's about five heads on there, yeah. I'm going to put into the side there. And another one on the other side. Okay. Just get rid of all this. So that's all the flowers that I'm going to put into this arrangement because as I said we're going to do a little bit of embellishment on the next video which will make it much more interesting to look at even though it's beautiful as it is and um, I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you for your feedback from the last one uh, it's really nice to know that you're there and remember any questions please ask away and if you would be interested in coming to one of my retreats, there's one coming up in December. It's at Chateau de Borno in France. It's a fantastic weekend away. I know I would say that, but I can tell you it is. It's really fun. We decorate the chateau ready for Christmas. You don't have to have any previous experience at all. All your food, all your accommodation, all your meals, all your tuition, flowers, sundries are all included. So that'd be nice if you could come and join us. All the details are on my website, blossomwithlaura.com. Thank you for watching and until next time, start arranging.